Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Friday and welcome to the Better Managers Briefing. I'm Anne Franca, the Chief Executive of the Chartered Management Institute. And each week at this time, we try to cover off some of the key issues that affect so many of you during this crisis. Um, today's topic is something uh, that I know could affect uh, as many as 2 million workers in the UK, which is they may lose their jobs. Now, how is it that you job hunt at this very difficult time? This is what we're going to cover today. I'm delighted to be joined by Kate Grussing, who's a CMI companion and the founder of the Sapphire Executive Search Company, and by CMI companion Suzanne Thorning Lund, who is a partner with Audgers Berenson, a major UK search firm. So welcome to both of you. I've been laid off. How do I look for a job that's at this really difficult time? Kate, could you kick us off, please? Sure. Well, I think, um, as you said in your intro, that's likely to be impacting thousands, if not millions of people. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about. I think there, there are many people in the same boat. And what's important is to focus on what you can do something about and whether it's um, updating your CV or reaching out to your network. But I think it is important that you give yourself time too. And you know, to, clearly having work is an important part of um, getting through this virus, but there are probably other things you can do in your community as well. But I, I would think positive, but I would think long-term. Clearly, um, many, many companies are battening down the hatches. Mm -hmm. So it's tough. Suzanne, what would your advice be? Probably the one thing I might add, uh, having agreed with everything that um, Kate is saying, this is an opportunity perhaps to learn new skills. If you think about it, you have time. So why not brush up on some of the things you always wanted to do, a few your or indeed do something to augment your leadership capabilities. Um, so try not to be defeatist about it because it does affect a lot of people. Sure, and that's um, that's great advice. And uh, we're making a lot of resources free for mm. people to learn new skills. And I think that you both make a really important point there. Um, but, but if you do want to look for a job, um, how can you find out who's hiring? And and what kind of skills do you think employers are going to be particularly interested in at this time? Kate, what do you think? Sure. Well, I would definitely look at company websites. Um, that's where they're going to post roles anywhere if they're going to post them. Now, clearly, the more senior the roles, the less likely they may be posting things. Um, and it, to be honest, it's hard to answer the second part of that question, which is what skills are employers looking for? because it, it varies hugely by sector and um, seniority. But clearly, as we can even see with something like this webinar, um, digital skills are more important than ever. So brushing up your technology, making sure you're comfortable with social media, making sure that you know how a, a Zoom or a WhatsApp or a FaceTime or a BlueJean call works before it's that really important interview. But um, I would also you know, read the press, um, but ask your peers and ask your network. And you know, pick up the phone to people who you think could be helpful or could um, help point you in the right directions. Those are all great tips, Suzanne. Are there any um, additional tips or sectors that you think might be, in particular, um, interested in hiring now? Uh, probably getting a general sense of the business news is what's happening. Uh, so I think it's fair to say that anybody in retail is very hard hit at the moment, as we know. Uh, I think if you think about it, property businesses are quite hard hit at the moment, um, but there are businesses that are flourishing. There are those who are produ producing alcohol. Um, I was speaking to a client only yesterday, and they're concerned that they can't get enough bottles to supply, uh, to go through their factories to supply the demand. So there are businesses that are thriving, and I think if you read business press, you'll get a sense of that. And do you think about it in the totality of the supply chain? As I just mentioned now with glass bottles, for example, not just the end product, but what goes into that would be mm -hmm. sensible. Yes, that's a great point. So uh, food producers, for example, and online deliveries create packaging demand. So maybe packaging is another sector, uh, as well as logistics, delivering all those packages. They, that, those are all great tips. Um, well, a lot of people may not lose their job, but they may have been furloughed. They may feel vulnerable at this time. And, and how can one look further um, one's career 
um, during this very difficult time. What tips would you offer there? Suzanne, let me start with you. Um, so one of the things uh, we have talked about before is networking. So speaking to people, what they're experiencing, trying to get tips from them. So I do think activating your network is an important part of this, but also being cognizant that people are hugely stressed at the moment. So pick your time when you do do that. Uh, be aware where people are coming from. I do think there's line managers who are very much in the front line here uh, and are leading people through very difficult times where colleagues perhaps might be worried, um, let alone things uh, whether they're going to lose their job or be furloughed, but actually things like going on public transport to fulfill the current jobs. Mm -hmm. The whole raft of social impact and human issues which are critical. And as a line manager, your job is to see people through that. And actually, that's a very valuable skill set that could be transferred elsewhere. So think about what you do in a positive sense. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Obviously, great line management is a highly transferable skill and one that will be much in demand as um, people seek to lead their teams at every level through this um, through this crisis. So uh, that's a that's an excellent point. Um, but so the virtual hiring process that's um, that's something quite um, new. And um, you know how does that work, um, Kate? What are your thoughts? And forgive me as well. Do come in on that other question about how can vulnerable people further their career. So maybe I'll start you off on that and then ask you about that virtual interview process. Well, I think everyone, whether you're feeling vulnerable or not, should update your CV on a regular basis. And you know, there are many, many candidates I reach out to who confess they haven't updated their CVs in 10 years. Mm -hmm. So use some downtime, whether it's an evening or a weekend, but but don't be caught out. Or update your LinkedIn or your bio. Or you know, there are many a candidate I reach out who's been at their whole same company their whole career and doesn't have a CV. So. Um, you know, it, it's hard to tell where the next um, economic challenge is going to come from. But, but to your, your next question, I think more and more companies and headhunters are absolutely doing searches soup to nuts over video technology. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it will be a rare role that maybe the candidate isn't met at all in person. But, you know, I, I think it is important to do practice interviews. And, you know, it can be hard to read body language, for example, on a, a Zoom call or a, a conference call. Um, so I think you have to perhaps over communicate um, relative to what you might be used to when you're sitting across the table from someone. But certainly the younger generation has been doing video interviews for quite a while for any graduate program. And you know, when when you have that all important interview, is not the time to realize that you don't have a charger cable or you don't have a good connection, um, or you don't have a good backdrop. Yeah, yeah, practice all those things. I know. Right before this, I discovered my computer didn't have any batteries, so that would be another thing that you check, uh, so that you don't get caught out. Um, Suzanne, you you mentioned um, earlier that you were doing some recruitment virtually. What are your tips about how to manage that process? Um, the main thing is to be comfortable with the technology. We've talked about that before, but it is really quite pivotal. So find out how the technology works and know what you look like on a picture. You know, it's a small thing, but how you come across, how you engage. If you're used to work using your arms a lot, that's quite difficult to do virtually, for example. So how do you bring across your points of view? The probably the one thing I would say is that it is a very focused media. It's very intense media. So be clear. Uh, have your the points you want to cover written down close to you, so you don't miss out on what it is you want to bring across. Um, but also realize it is a conversation. It's not a Q and A. It is a trying to establish a rapport as much as you can. Um, and I think that uh, that will be quite important. The, uh, the other aspect, which is to do with the virtual interviews, is that people rely much more now on informal referencing or sounding on individuals. So that is your referees, it's your mentors, it's your champions. What do they say about you? What would they be willing to say about you and to whom? Uh, so that network uh, becomes much more important in the virtual world because it's trying to substitute that personal meeting that you can't have for a period of time at least. 
Yes, that's an excellent point. So reaching out to those sponsors or those referees and making sure um, that their references are up to date and understanding what they might say if asked about you is probably a really important thing to be doing right now. And um, I would add the one thing I know we discussed earlier, it's a tip from Tom Ford, the fashion designer, about putting a white tablecloth, apparently, underneath um, the sur or the surface where you're doing the interview so it lights up your face. So that's the other tip that I read about uh, at how to look your best virtually. Um, now, this is an important question, and actually, uh, we, we, do, we are taking questions, by the way, and if you want to ask a question, you just click the YouTube link and you submit your question. Um, but somebody did submit this question in advance, and it actually is one of the questions I wanted to cover with you both, which is, um, will this crisis, do you think, bring about lasting changes in the way companies recruit? And if so, what do you think those will be? Kate, what do you think? Well, I'm, I think a silver lining will be for companies to appreciate how effective individuals can be working remotely and working from home. And you know, today, very few roles are recruited where that is part of the package going in. Um, it's more tends to be something that individuals earn. So I, I'd like to think a silver lining will be many more people will be comfortable that you don't have to be in the same office building to be confident that someone can be productive. Um, I think, secondly, the point Suzanne mentioned earlier about it, I do think referencing will become even more important. We know interviews are not the best channel to really assess a candidate's fit and effectiveness, but, you know, they're, they're temporary and brief, and it depends on, you know, how good is the interviewee as well as the interviewer, whereas I think references, someone who's worked with you for a period of years um, in challenging circumstances, I, I do think will become more important. A third area might be probationary periods. I, I could see the benefit for company as, of extending probationary periods, um, especially if they've done all their interviews um, virtually and they haven't actually met the individual in person. Combined with the fact that you know the longer um, economic impact, it's still hard to foresee how long um, some industries may be hit by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Suzanne, what about you? What do, what do you think will change? Um, well, just speaking to uh, some of the company boards I deal with, they are now much more comfortable with having board meetings virtually. Mm -hmm. uh, even audit committee chair uh, chairmen say that they're very happy with audit committees being conducted virtually, which is something they would never thought about before, particularly with the challenging financial stresses that businesses are under. So I think boards and senior leaders, therefore, are much more comfortable with the technology and that to my mind, will drive a uh, behavioural change, so that it will impact recruitment. I do think people, to Kate's point, will be much more open towards people being based somewhere else remotely. It does not have to be your home. Actually, I'm thinking geographical mobility, perhaps social mobility. I think they'll be opening up vast swathes of opportunities for people, not just in your home domain or regional domain, or even na nationwide, but internationally. So I think that will be... Um, uh, supported by virtual interviews. There is the one thing though on virtual interviews, you can never substitute, and particularly for a manager, managerial level, that feeling of who your team is. So if, would you join a company as a managing director or, or CEO or a line manager and not know who your team is? That's, you know, it goes the other way as well. So whilst I think virtual uh, meetings kind of substitute a lot, that personal connectivity will remain important. Yes, and, and knowing your team members and maybe um, making time being extra thorough that you meet as many of them as possible. I know we advise people to spend time this time really getting to know who their teams are as people. And of course, we are seeing into many people's living rooms and, and studies and, you know, and their children are there and their pets are there. And so that's actually... Um, you know, perhaps another silver lining is that we're getting to know the people we work with perhaps better than we ever did before because we're seeing them in a different environment outside of work. Um, okay, well, that's all great advice. Now, I know we have a lot of questions. Um, I'm going to start kicking these off. Um, this, is, this is from Sarah. Sarah has a contract that expires at the beginning of July. And let's see, we're in the middle of April. So she's asking, uh, what, what are your tips? 
Kate, what do you think Sarah should be doing? Well, I think the point that's come up about the importance of communication. And you know, for Sarah's employer, it may be very hard for them to fill her shoes. Likewise, they may not have enough to keep Sarah busy. So I would not wait until June to ask the question. I would raise the point much, much earlier. And you know, she may need to be more flexible. It may be that her um, the manager doesn't know yet. But I think for Sarah to communicate how committed she is and you know how, how flexible she can be. Otherwise, Sarah needs to start spending time looking for opportunities after July. And she shouldn't wait till July to have that chat, obviously. Mm -hmm. And Suzanne, anything to add to that? I, I would agree wholeheartedly with that. Make sure, actually, what you're really trying to do is to position yourself the best you can with your current employer and indeed to have the flexibility of time to look elsewhere if that indeed is what is going to be happening. And then we talked about things like updating the CV for sure, updating your LinkedIn profile for sure, speak to your um, champions and start that networking. Yes, okay, great, great advice. Another question from Donna. What's your advice on taking a cold approach? when reaching out on LinkedIn for a potential role at, at similar companies where they may not be posting those roles. Suzanne, what do you think? Um, a lot of people do that anyway now, so I don't see that's going to be any different um, going forward. The the one point to bear in mind is there's going to be quite a plethora of, um, of networking or reach outs, generally speaking, so how can you stand out? So if you do do that by LinkedIn, what is the summary in your title, uh, as it were? What is it you're trying to get across uh, so that you help your target, uh, as it were, your, your, your target company, get to understand who you are in as succinct a way as possible and realize that maybe they may not come back to you. I mean, if they're inundated, the fact that they don't respond does not mean they haven't read it. It just means that they have other things which are priority. Mm -hmm. and, and if they don't respond, um, I know Donna didn't ask this, but how many times should you repeat your reach out before you say, oh, they're just not interested? I'll take that one. Okay. Um, I, I, I'd say twice. Um, after twice, I think that you can start to become a pest. Um, and people are busy, so I think it's completely reasonable to send a nudge and say, I realize you may have missed my my first approach. You know, I'd, I'd love to get some advice. Um, but I, I think people might be surprised as much as, yes, everyone is incredibly busy juggling more balls. Um, I, I think people are being very generous and compassionate. And if they can, um, you know, do try, give them a second chance. Yeah, that, that's an excellent point. Um, uh, so the next question um, seems to be focusing on, um, so there, this person, I can't see who it's from because I can't see the the. But it, they've done more. They've done some interviewing, um, but the interviews have been postponed. And it's um, obviously in an industry that's been hard hit, the energy in this industry. Um, and this person is is asking. They're close to running out of contacts to connect with. Should they slow down um, until some liquidity reappears? Um, they're they're keeping busy by writing up their chartered status assessment. Excellent, because that will again do something to differentiate you. Um, but how would you advise them? Should they slow down? Um, the, their their process has effectively been frozen. Well, perhaps if I start the answer that one, if the industry is facing difficulties, there's no one going to hire anyway. So, however much you push for that, no one's going to hire you because there's no money to pay for you anyway. So um, I think there's a realization on that one. Some of the points we said earlier in terms of maybe upgrading and learning new skills might be a good thing. So why not augment what you're doing at the moment and make yourself more interesting once the market do pick up? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and what about, you know, transferring this? This was in the energy sector. Um, Kate, would you advise, that question was from Adam, would you advise Adam to maybe look at other sectors and how he could transfer some of his skills? No, I think it's really important to think laterally. And there are going to be sectors like energy and retail that may not come back for a while. Though, you know, my guess is Adam's skills are far more relevant than just to the energy sector. So, you know, take a look at your CV and your LinkedIn, Adam, and think about what, what skills can you highlight, what experience that isn't just sector domain relevant. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and we know that uh, chartered managers do um, perform very well. We have an infographic on that, Adam, and there's some stats in there that have been done independently and um, that increase that demonstrate how you increase your employability and your results um, uh, focus uh, to an employer. And maybe you can use some of those in other sectors. And that would be my tip. I've got another question from Maria. It touches on networking, and we talked about using LinkedIn for networking, but, but Maria wanted to know, um, is it just generally acceptable to ask for networking chats at this strange time? Um, who You both touched on networking. Um, Kate, do you want to start with that? Yeah, no, I, th I think networking is, is really relevant at this time. I wouldn't start every conversation um, just on a professional basis, I'd ask you know how the how the person is doing, whether that's LinkedIn or email or a phone call. But um, you know, as as people are self socially isolating, they do welcome the reach outs, and you know, people like to give advice and to share their experience. Now it, it goes to the earlier point: you may not get a reply quickly, but um, I've actually been really impressed at the speed of replies I've had from some of you know my most senior clients and candidates. And I think it goes back to that compassion point. And in individuals' days may be stretching slightly longer. Um, so give it a try. What have you got to lose? Yeah, that's a great, great point. Um, Suzanne, what would you say to that? Oh, I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, be proactive is good. Do you realize that people can be busy? So don't be, don't be down hard if they don't respond. But absolutely, mm -hmm. go for it. So here's a, a question from Priscilla. Um, she's asking, uh, how many applications do you think I need to submit per day um, to be successful three months from now? Um, that's a that's a a great question. I, I don't know if you have the answer, but I'm going to push you to advise Priscilla, Kate. What would you advise her? <laughs> Priscilla, I, I can't put a number on it. It, it depends or in terms of the, the quality. Um, I wouldn't want you to think that you know. Three to four months, you're absolutely going to get what you're looking for. Either I think it's important to be patient. Um, you know, I know one amazing candidate who will remain unnamed. Who you know, she put her hat in the ring 81 times before she got the perfect board role. Well, God bless her that she kept trying. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I, I think that this strange time is going to require more persistence and more resilience. But there are a lot of people in the same boat, Priscilla. So um, you know, don't give up. Great. So, uh, Suzanne, um, how many? What, what would you say to Priscilla? Well, I mean, how long is a piece of string? It is very difficult to put a number to something like that. Uh, you may be very fortunate, and number two uh, will uh, will yield the result you're after. But it does depend also just how competitive it is, and how is your skill set particularly unique? Are you particularly well suited to something, uh, or are you? one of several hundred, several thousands who are going for the same job. So it's a, you know, it is part of numbers, a numbers game, but where do you stand out? What is it that makes you particularly um, special for a particular role and trying to get that across in your application? Yes, and I think both of you have offered advice that Priscilla could maybe make use of, which is broadening your skill set, using this time to beef up your perhaps digital skills or managerial skills. And also not being so constrained by location, right? Uh, Suzanne, you made the point that you thought companies, you both made the point that companies will be more open to remote and flexible working. So um, so Priscilla shouldn't. Oh, sorry, but that's the downside of home working. Oh, there you go. That's okay. Don't worry. Um, uh, Priscilla shouldn't restrict herself to just her immediate geographical environment and she should look further afield perhaps would be another piece of advice. Um, so, okay, this is another uh, builds on Priscilla's question and I think we've, we've covered some of these tips, but anything else, this is from Asif. He wants to know how can I make myself stand out in an, in, as an innovative candidate in the current climate? Uh, who wants to take that one? Well, uh, do we want to be innovative? Sometimes there might be, uh, there's those who would say that the current climate actually is a return to uh, stability. They're looking for people who've been through difficult times. So people who are used to dealing with adversity, crises, um, fast delivery of uh, projects, etc. They may not be innovative per se in the way that you define innovative, 
but it may be what businesses need at this moment in time. Um, some of the other points we talked about, if you do want to be innovative, try to make yourself different and difference can go with learning new skills, for example. Yes. Okay. Kate, any other advice? That's some great advice there, I think. I, mean, I think any candidate needs to focus on why would someone want to hire you? What are your main skills and strengths? Mm -hmm. And if it's um, a, a business about innovation, then that is important. If it's a business that's, say, about risk management or financial control, then um, innovation isn't a strength. Yes. And I think Suzanne's point about the ability to work well in a crisis, um, you know, being calm, level headed, decisive, um, you know, resilient. I think these qualities will be particularly important now. And as Suzanne and you, Kate, both intimated, it might actually be more important than, you know, being blue sky creative when actually that's not really what's required at the moment. So about thinking about what are the skills that matter now. Um, now, here's somebody who's in the um, has the shoe on the other foot. This is a question from Brian. Brian is trying to recruit a new team leader at the moment. And what should he be thinking about as the interviewer? Which is a great question because you guys are professional interviewers. So, um, Suzanne, let me start with you. Uh, well, in, in my experience um, over the last few weeks um, is that the interview and the process, in fact, is very similar to what you would expect normally. And what I by that I mean is a very clear um, brief that you're recruiting to. You have your skill sets that you know you're recruiting to. You know what it is experience-wise you want. Uh, so all of that is um, a given, if you like, and that is what you're testing in virtual interviews. Um, perhaps where the difference comes is how do you establish that rapport in the virtual interview setting? So how do you make sure you are both getting value out of the meeting? So that is with your questions, allowing time for response, um, making sure you invite questions back. So that is the virtual interview protocol. Um, in the end of the day, as a team leader, I would assume that it is unlikely that you would hire somebody uh, without meeting them or for your team to meet them, perhaps in person, ideally, of course. And you might then want to say, well, actually, can you extend your interview process such that you're doing all of the preliminary interviews, your interviews, the team's interviews with the preferred individuals, and then maybe have two or three people who you meet in person, invite to your offices, once we have some relaxation of uh, the travel restrictions. Question is whether you can wait to that time, and we don't know when that is, but if you have that ability to build that into your timeline, that would be my advice. Yes, that's that's great advice. Kate, anything to add there? I think I would add, give yourself a bit more time. And I think you can do a really in-depth interview of candidates, getting to know them pretty well virtually. Now, not in 30 minutes, or maybe not even in one interview slot. But um, you know, I think if you're rigorous around asking candidates the same questions, um, I, I'm cautiously optimistic that there are going to be benefits of doing things online where maybe we're, we're not influenced by things we've been in the past. So I, I, I think just be, being thoughtful and giving it extra time would be my main advice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Similar not to maybe not rush into it and and involving the team which you can do virtually but of course is always best done in in, in person um so this um uh, this is actually somebody uh, this is a younger person um who is about to start a placement year in september um but she wants to find this is adele she wants to find work experience right now um so what would you advise adele kate I think it's going to be hard to find work experience in the near term, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'm, I, I think we're all confident that um, the restrictions may be loosened by September. Um, I would think about what are voluntary things you could do in the community? What are projects you could do from your kitchen table? Um, and, you know, I, I, there certainly are industries that are hiring at a, a more junior level. Um, so perhaps look at work experience in sectors which are booming, um, mm -hmm. such as online delivery or um, you know, technology companies. But um, at, a, at a junior end, which I'm guessing um, Adele is at, um, you know, there'll be many people in the same boat, Adele. So, 
So be a bit patient. And I bet the placement year in September may still come off. Well, let's hope so. So the last question here is from William. Um, and he's asking, what will career development look like post-COVID? How will workplace culture be impacted? Suzanne, do you want to share your wisdom on that? Great question. Mm. A very good question. Thank you for that, William. Um, I think career development, um, we have seen already that career development is not a, um, a linear development or a linear trajectory. And I think certainly post COVID-19, we will see much more holistic and sideways moves. Um, I think you may look at um, uh, career augmentation saying, well, actually I'm taking it took a step down. I managing fewer numbers of people, but I've learned X, Y, Z. For example, so you have a different way and a different story rather than the more traditional um, linear career trajectory you would have seen uh, historically. Uh, so I think that's probably point one. Um, uh, workplace culture, uh, people will be much more open. I do think so. I think people are much more entrepreneurial, uh, more, more welcoming uh, and giving things a go. Just trying it out, I think, is uh, something that most companies now and cultures uh, we'll look for. That's some great advice. Kate, any parting words on that question? Yes, two things I'd like to add. I think career development clearly is up to each individual. You can't expect your company to take charge of that. You have to take charge of that. So use this time to, to learn a new skill. Look at what CMI might have on its website. Have you learned to code or, or do something that you can go back to your manager in three months or six months and tell them something that you've taken responsibility for. And the second point, I agree with what Suzanne was saying. I think on workplace culture, um, I do think companies that are going to be the most attractive employers will be those that have come through this chapter, having been compassionate, having thought about their employees' mental health. Um, and I, I think there'll be a lot more focus on the communication skills and the leadership skills that um, you know, will help us all get through this. That's a great point. Thank you both so much for your words of wisdom, some really wonderful advice there. And your point about learning new skills is very apt because this uh, time next week, I'll be talking with Sir Charlie Mayfield on exactly that topic. How can we use this crisis to learn some new skills? So again, thank you both. Thanks to the audience for some great questions and uh, stay safe, stay safe and stay strong and stay virtually in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.